Hello and welcome to our special program Meet the Envoy. In this program we invite envoys of different countries. Today we are very honored to have our special guest Dr. Zawad Muslumi, Deputy for Cultural Affairs, the Iranian Supreme Hajj Committee. Let's talk with him. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Zawad Muslumi. Alaikum salam. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. It is my pleasure to be with you and your audience. Thank you very much. Zawad Muslimi, would you please enlighten us the bilateral relationship between Bangladesh and Iran? Uh, I think it is clearly that we have very good relationship between two countries because we have many things in common and it can make such as things. For example, about the scientific relationship between Iran and Bangladesh, exactly. we have in the last two years, we have more than 150 students of Iranian people who came to Bangladesh to attend the Bangladesh universities as well. And I know there are some Bangladeshi people who are educating in Iran as well. And from the other side, for example, we have, uh, alhamdulillah, I, I can say that there is a very good reputation for Iranian artistic activities here, especially on this movies and exactly. TVs and TV series that you can see it, it, they are for example the Yusuf or the Joseph is very popular here and it can be a good beginning to in inter a uh, relationship between Iran and Bangladesh in artistic and cultural affairs exactly. as well. Thank you we really got very nice information and you also might be happy to know that the three private uh, public universities of Bangladesh are teaching Persian language and literature. And our two poets, Qazi Nazrul Islam, the national poet of Bangladesh, and Farooq Ahmed used many word and expression of Persian language into Bangla poetry. So I think it is some deeper level of deeper this level, exactly. uh, connection between Iran and Bangladesh, and it goes back to the literature. Literature, we exactly. we talk about the Persian language, we Persian. are talking about something which is, a, I can call it a common heritage between Iran exactly. and Bangladesh. It right. was something that we both of them shared this heritage and there are many poets and poems Poems. that you, when you see a Bengali brother, always they have something in their m yeah. mind to say to you, for example, from Hafiz, from Saadi, and even the, as you know, the work of Ferdowsi, it is translated into Bangla. Bengali, as and well as are, Hafiz. Yes, oh, oh, exactly, and there are more than 8,000 Persian words that you use it in your daily life. It shows that the connection is much deeper than this, exactly. and in last years we had Hafez Sarah as a Persian corner in University of Dhaka and fortunately it is popular among the students. Thank you very much. So the cultural tie based on strong foundation, do you think so? Yeah, I think deeper than the literature, literature. we have something much deeper. much deeper. It goes to our hearts and it is that we are, alhamdulillah, having the same religion, we are all Muslims. Exactly. And we believe, as a real Muslim, that all believers are brothers. So there is a very strong brotherhood among all Muslims. If we are Muslim, we should believe on it. And it means that we should show our sympathy toward our brothers, that it happens in the family. Exactly. So it can be the deepest level of uh, connection between Iran and Bangladesh as exactly. other countries, Islamic countries as well, and we are proud of it, alhamdulillah. Exactly. And we are really grateful that your supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who stand beside Bangladesh when the last Rohingya influx began in exactly. Bangladesh. And the people of Iran also took to the streets during that influx. So perhaps your government is very keen to extend the all-out support towards resolving the Rohingya issue. Yeah, here we had, alhamdulillah, many activities. Some of them go to the government. From right. the government side, as you may know, that there we had some humanitarian aids right. to the Rohingya in Rakhine State. Exactly. And after their new movement to Bangladesh, they entered the Bangladesh, you know, it is a very big problem to have one million refugee as a guest in the Bangladesh. Exactly. We can understand it because during the, sometimes for Afghanistan war, we had it for three million people and we know it is really, really difficult for a country to meet such a problem. So it is our duty as a Muslim, as a brother, to help the others. Government, Iranian government, as 
you know that there was a hospital. They made a hospital for refugees and some humanitarian aids. And it is interesting that beside the government, we have NGOs. NGOs. And it is much interesting from my point of view. Why? Because it shows that the people understand such a responsibility. And we have, for example, ourselves, we had three times we attend here some humanitarian aid. And it is just by the people. Iranian people, they fulfilled their duty and we hope that we can help more inshallah in the future. Thank you very much for your humanitarian effort. And another thing I would like to know that do you think that YC, OIC, the Organization of Islamic Conference, yeah. can take stronger role apart from the United Nations in expediting the Rohingya repatriation, Palestines and other issues? It depends on your point of view. Let me be frank. When we say that it is a political issue, in the politics you have many problems. But if you believe that here we have some responsibility, right. goes back to our religion. What do you say? There is a very famous narration from Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, Man Muslim. If there is a one who here a person needs help, ask for help, and he unfortunately didn't help him, he is not a Muslim. If you believe on it, and it is interesting, say Rajulan, not a Muslim. Everyone who asks your help, even non-Muslims. So if it is, and if we think in this way, it means that we should believe that we should help the others. And unfortunately, in Islamic countries, sometimes it is considered a political issue right. than something that should go to your belief and to help the others. And Rohingya are nowadays one of the most, I can say, oppressed people because they lost the everything they had, exactly. even their identity. Identity. So thank you, and Iran would take a stronger effort in resolving the Rohingya issue beside Bangladesh. We expect that. Dr. Muslumi, we will talk more important issues. Now it's time for a short break. You are watching Meet the Envoy. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching our special program, Meet the Envoy. Today, Dr. Zawad Muslumi is with us. Dr. Zawad Muslumi, you know that Bangladesh is going to be a middle income country by 2021st and sure. the uh, developed country by 2041st. So how do you evaluate the current development efforts being taken by the incumbent government of Bangladesh? Uh, interestingly, I see because I uh, had some trips to Bangladesh during the last decade, for example, which is, I think it is my mm, eighth trip to Bangladesh or more. So I saw such a progress in Bangladesh. And interestingly, it is something which is understood by two sides, by Iran and Bangladesh, that we need to have some stronger bilateral relationships. And uh, interestingly, I saw two s things in the news. It was very, very nice that first, uh, when our uh, president sent the, our new embassy ambassador here, he asked him, try to make our relationship, our economical relationship with the uh, Bangladesh much stronger. It is said to Mr. Nafar, our new ambassador here. And vice versa, when we go to Iran, in Iran, the um, ambassador of Bangladesh, uh, the Mr. Mujiro Rahman, he was just two months ago, he had some trip to some province of Iran. He didn't say that, no, I should stay just in Tehran, no. He had some trip to some border province of Iran to make the tie between Iran and Bangladesh in economical aspects much stronger. So both sides believe that it can be much stronger and I hope it happens very well. Thank you. And you were talking about Muslim brotherhoods yeah. and I'd like to ask about some international uh, affairs. So what will be the role of Islamic unity in making Islamic countries stronger and how they can reach it? We should believe this sentence, which is said to us by Western, unfortunately, thinkers, they said divide, conquer. So it is what happened nowadays in Islamic countries. They divided us into different groups. Sometimes they said it is the quarrel, is the fight is between the Shia and Sunni. We said, okay. And when we go somehow after, they say, no, it is the problem among the Arab and non-Arab. We say, okay. And when we go much deeper after that, they say even between some Sunni Muslim countries, Arab countries, there are some problems that what you saw among the Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Unfortunately, our enemies divided us into different names. There is not important which title they call you, but they tried to divide us into you are Bangladeshi, 
your skin color your these 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 can divided us into different groups but vice versa when we go to Islam Islam said the Muslims the are brothers not all brothers the same we have different color skins even in a family some of them are taller some of them are thicker some of them are thin they differ but the differences doesn't mean that we are separated we are like the fingers of one hand when we are facing our enemy all of us we will be one fist one but fist, when right. we are with each other we try to help each other if all of my fingers were the same I cannot take anything because it should has some different angles to help right. me and it is why we can see and in Holy Quran it is said that we made you into different groups different tribes different colors why to be known because we are not the products of a company exactly. so if what was from one factory we cannot find each other it is why we need to believe that this brotherhood can help us to progress not to make unfortunately some quarrel or fights thank you so uh, we know that U.S. has imposed sanctions on Iran. So how Iran is surviving amid U.S. sanctions? And give an idea about how your country's status in terms of trade and economy following the sanction. Uh, we should look at the history. As you know, in our war with Saddam Hussein, we had much stronger sanctions than that w what we have today. There is a problem between United States and yeah, European, European Union. European yeah. Union this yes. is some problem, and there are some differences among the the belief of the European even and some our neighbor countries. We had good relationships, and they are, and even the uh, U.S. sanctions are limited these days. They say, you no, it is not just for the Indian. It is not for such a, many countries are allowed to have their relationship with Iran about Iran, the right. oil, for example. So the sanctions are these days too weak to bother us the second point and when you go to the sanction it means if we are we feel that we need we will go uh, and make some development by ourselves we will have some progress and it was what we happened during the time of the war and we made many things in by our hands and it can help us also there will be some difficulty surely if sure. we are uh, frank about it that there will be some difficulty but in the future near future this difficulty will make us stronger because by resistance you will reach better conditions. In Holy Quran it says that uh, there is no fear and sorrow for the people who say Rabbun Allah, our Lord is Almighty Allah and they have, they were patient for this and we hope to be such a people in Iran. Right. We know Iran has progressed a lot and Iran Iran's Islamic revolution is going to enter its 40 years. So what is the achievement during this period? Uh, Alhamdulillah, we had many things. One of them was our uh, achievement and progress in the scientific. As you know, in some courses and some fields, Iran is one of the fifths or one of, one of the tens countries. For example, when we go to the satellite, when we go to the nanotechnology, when we go to the um, some even flying the airplanes we are reached here and alhamdulillah it is something clear the second point that we feel much deeper thing and it is our independence, independence. we reach something that we decide about ourselves we think the future are in our hands but when you go unfortunately at the time of Shah everything is in the hands of others United States will decide who will be the king who will be the, oh, the it is not acceptable when we believe on our independence and alhamdulillah we reached self-confidence we can make much better conditions if you go to iran and compare there are some documentaries from iranian condition there may be some just few pictures of iranian progress developed part of tehran at that time but it was just limited to tehran and to the high class of tehran not to all part of it but nowadays even you can go to any any village there is the electricity, there is the water, the healthy water, there are some, uh, even the internet, not the, internet. Uh, just the telephone and either the internet. So we reach some progress, but more than it, I think more important than this is we believe that we are the person who will build the future. Thank you. We're at the very end of the program. So do you like to talk any other topic which we have missed today? Uh, 
No, I should thank you. And I think it is important that we believe according to our belief, according to our culture, we can change the future. Unfortunately, in some countries, on some people, we are looking at the other's hands. Right. And it is impossible because they won't offer you what you need. Always we should believe that we can and after that we will get that point, inshallah, very soon and very, inshallah, easy. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Viewers, our valuable guest, Dr. Zawad Muslumi, Deputy for Cultural Affairs. The Iranian Supreme Hajj Committee was with us. Keep watching DBC News.